students welcome to ifs i hope i am properly audible to everyone and i am properly visible as well am i am i properly audible and visible to everyone okay so i guess uh, you all can see me properly and you can hear me properly as well so today is uh, another session of discussing pyqs okay so here we are discussing all the ncqs related to whatever we have studied earlier so jaise ki aapko pata hai ki we have studied about old english literature middle english literature then also age of chaucer as well as uh, age of revival so uh, the questions that we are discussing right now are on uh, based on all these topics okay so uh, when we are discussing all these topics always remember that just don't pay attention to that one particular topic with that there are hundreds and thousands of things which you have to consider so what will happen ki jo cheez aap pad rahe hai na usi ke sath sath aur 10 cheezon ke bare mein aapko pata chalega getting my point so whenever you are studying for any particular work always remember that also read and related with other works so for example when we study that who said chaucer as the grandfather of novels so when this is the question what you have to remember first of all you have to remember the name of the person who said this with that person you should know about the background of that person as well as in which context he said that in which of his essays or in which of his novels or where he said this thing okay so all the other things you have to remember with that one particular sentence okay so this is a important thing that you should be remembering or you should always remember whenever you are studying for any any topic related to english literature now um coming back to the topic as you all know ki bilkul bhi mat bhuliyega to subscribe the channel jaldi se jaldi aapke sare friends ke sath is lecture ko share kar dijiye taki we could start with our session share uh, uh, the session with all of your friends so that they won't miss their preparations as you all are preparing for ugc net they will also be able to get the benefit of this lecture as you all know that this is a 30 days free crash course completely free so uh, in this i am teaching you everything related to ugc net english so here we have already begin with our sessions so um even if uh, your friends have not uh, seen my previous lectures that absolutely fine they can watch it later on as well but at least now they will be able to understand and to know the lectures which are going on right now okay and their further studies will be easier with us so uh quickly share this channel with all your friends uh, and also subscribe tell them to subscribe like this video like this lecture so that i will understand that yes you all are following me yes you all are with me okay uh yes revti hello hello and very good evening to you so now um let's move ahead and yes before we actually uh, look into this is another un reminder for you so even if you have till date if you have not taken admission in the course if you haven't enrolled in the course do it right away so that uh, you won't miss the opportunity and your studies will not be delayed that, that those will be uh, started on time now there are so many students who are telling me ma'am uh, the uh, application dates are not been declared or uh, application forms are not out yet when will be the exam we are not sure about it it's absolutely fine that doesn't matter because the exam is definitely going to happen that is for sure right 
with that but uh, your preparation should not stop preparation should go on and uh, if you will uh, consider if you will start studying from today you will get ample number of days ample number of time to study for it okay so that is another benefit you are getting so at the last moment when the dates will be out if you start studying at that time then you will have to rush the syllabus you will have to spend uh, 10 and 12 and 15 hours of your day for your studies which is of no use and from that only 10 to 20 percent will be remembered by you at the time of your exam but if you will go slow but you are steady then you will definitely reach to your goal okay and you will qualify the exam with maximum numbers okay so don't forget to uh, continue your preparations and don't forget to enroll in the course even if you have any of your friends, uh, those who are preparing for UGC Net English, also let them know about the course so that they can also uh, start preparing for it. They can also take admission in the course and they will get to know everything in detail about the course. Okay. So if you have any other uh, queries related to the course, you can call on the number provided here that is 917-226-6888. You can call on this number and you can get all the details of the course, okay? So, uh, yes, coming back to the questions now. So, uh, I hope you all are enjoying. I've been getting so many messages, so many comments from so many students that these uh, MCQs are very much beneficial for the practice purpose. I hope these are beneficial for you as well. So, uh, and also you are enjoying to solve all this because uh, whatever you have studied, it is well remembered with the help of the MCQs. If you, are, uh, if you haven't practiced the MCQs, whatever you have studied for the lecture, that will not be remembered by you later on. You will read it then and you will forget it later. And I don't want that to happen with you, okay? So that is why we are practicing maximum number of MCQs so that the very first thing you will remember uh, how uh, to give the answer for the questions. Uh, you will understand the concept properly. Second, uh, you will also get to know that in which way, in which form the questions are being asked in your exams. Okay. So uh, these are some of the benefits here. Okay. Let me till then let me just acknowledge the comment. Yes, uh, very good evening, Ankit. Very good evening to you. So, here is our first question. Pay attention to the question number one. So, this is again about Chaucer. So, Chaucer began to write the Canterbury Tales in the year. So, when he started writing about the Canterbury Tales, this is also we have studied in our previous sessions when I was talking about the theory, when I explained you about the Canterbury Tales, I also mentioned that it started in 1385. Okay. So, remember this. When was it started? It basically started in um, 1385. So, he started writing about Canterbury Tales and as you all know that his uh, time during his uh, lifespan was till 1400. That is why that was that what was the reason uh, why he couldn't complete the whole essay. Okay. So, this is another key point that you can remember that. Uh, so, if with this you will remember a lot of things. For let's say his lifespan will be remembered by you because he died in 1400 he couldn't complete the Canterbury Tales. So now you remembered the reason why he couldn't complete the Canterbury Tales because he started in 18, uh, 1385. So then uh, he uh, so in his hand there were only 15 years. So, how can he complete in just in 15 years 120 stories? Okay. And again, he was also suffering from the diseases. He was ill. So, that is why he actually couldn't complete it. So, then you understood his lifespan as well as when he started writing for the Canterbury Tales. Okay. So, uh, this is another information that you can remember. Okay. I hope this is clear by everyone. Now, let's pay attention to the question number two, which says, who introduced the heroic couplet? 
into English words. Now, first of all, you should know what a heroic couplet is. Pay attention here. What is a heroic couplet? So, basically, heroic couplet is a traditional form for English poetry, commonly used in epics. And narrative poetry. So, whenever you are writing narrative poetry or whenever you are reading any traditional work, you will find heroic couplets there. And consisting of a rhyming pair of lines in iambic pentameter. Okay. Uh, so, the lines which are used in heroic couplet are in the iambic pentameter. The use of the heroic couplet was pioneered by Geoffrey Chaucer. This is again very important. So, it was pioneered by him. Okay. Remember this. In the uh, legend of good women uh, and in the Canterbury tale. So, where he actually used this heroic couplets in the good women, in his uh, the legend of good women in this work as well as in the Canterbury Tales work, okay, and generally considered to have been perfected by John Dryden and Alexander Pope in the Restoration Age and early 18th century respectively. So, uh, basically, Geoffrey Chaucer started with the, um, with the uh, heroic couplets, but who perfected it, who uh, gave justice to heroic couplets later on after Geoffrey Chaucer, it was Dryden as well as Alexander Pope, okay. So, these are again two important names which you have to remember. Which are the two names? It is John Dryden as well as Alexander Pope, okay. So, what is the, so yeah, coming back to the question. So, now uh, here what we have understood is that the heroic couplet, who introduced it? It was Geoffrey Chaucer who introduced about the heroic couplet to uh, English literature, okay. Got it? See here, it was pioneered by, clearly given to us. Now pay attention to the next question. What is our next question? So Chaucer was called the earliest of the great moderns and was also called the morning star of the renaissance. Who initiated these remarks? Who was the person? It was William Al Albert. So his complete name is William Albert. He said that um, Chaucer is, uh, uh, is the earliest of the mod uh, great moderns and he is also the morning star of renaissance, okay. So, who was Ad uh, Edward Albert? As I uh, already told you, you also have to remember the background of the author, of the writer. So, Edward, um, Edward sorry, it's Edward, uh, not William, it is Edward, okay. I am extremely sorry. Not William Ad, uh, Albert, it's Edward. Edward Albert, okay. Uh, so, who was Edward A Albert? Calls uh, him earliest of the great moderns. And Chaucer stands at the end of the Middle Ages and the beginning of the modern age. And he has been called the morning star of the Renaissance. Uh, in his, his poetry reflects the medieval spirit and it also reflects the Italian Renaissance. That is why he was called as the morning star of Renaissance as well as the earliest of the great moderns, okay? Yeah, let me just acknowledge few of the comments here. Okay, so um, most welcome Gaurav, this is only for you. I hope you are getting whatever I am teaching you here. Okay, so uh, Sharyu is asking, ma'am, kitni MCQ practice karna chahiye per day? So now, uh, this is completely up to you, Sharyu. Uh, I would not suggest the number, but I can give you a hint maybe or with a, or a trick maybe that if you are studying for let's say four hours, then uh, give two hours for your learning purpose and give two hours for your practice purpose. 
okay if you are studying for 5 hours give us or let's uh, say 60% study for the topic and then 40% solve the mcqs now it completely depends on you that how much you are studying in a day so let's say if you have studied one topic so let's say if you have studied uh, just the joffrey chaucer or age of chaucer then you can practice at least 20 questions a day okay minimum 20 is required and maximum is uh, absolutely up to you you can practice 50 100 150 200 whatever number you can go with okay so uh, but at least 20 you have to practice if you have studied only one topic okay if you have studied multiple topics then you can multiply the number of mcqs as well okay yeah then uh Prajwe is saying I thought it's Pope. Uh, no, 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 no. Absolutely wrong, uh, Praju. It is uh, the Joffrey. Uh, sorry, uh, it was the it was the Edward Albert. Okay. Uh, now pay attention to the next question. So, who is the author of Preface to Shakespeare? Who is the author of Preface to Shakespeare? It is. Dr. Johnson, okay, so it is Dr. Johnson who is the author of Preface to Shakespeare. Got it? Now pay attention to the next question. What is our next question? The next question says, Who is the messenger of the fairies in the tempest? Who is the messenger? I hope you all have read the tempest. Who is the author of the Tempest? Who is the author of the Tempest? It is a very famous play written or it is a very famous book or drama written by very famous playwright. William Shakespeare. Okay. So, The Tempest is written by William Shakespeare. Now, you should know that what is there in uh, The Tempest. Okay. So, here you will find the uh, background of uh, The Tempest. That is, so Prospero uses magic to, uh, so here there is one person called as Prospero who uses magic to conjure a storm and torment the survivors of the shipwreck including the king of Naples and Pro, uh, Propero's uh, treacherous brother, Antonio, okay? So, these are the characters. Remember, also pay attention to the characters because there is a possibility that they might also ask you about the uh, uh, other character as well. So, Prospero's slave, uh, Caliban, plots to rid himself of his master, but is um, thwarted by Prospero's spirit servant Ariel. Okay, so who is he living with? With the um, spirit servant that is Ariel. Okay, so now here um, you will find the answer by yourself that who is the messenger of the fairies here? Who is the messenger? Yes, Kajal, absolutely correct. So, the answer is Ariel, okay? So, the answer will be Ariel. That Ariel is the messenger of fairies here. So, here also you can uh, find it is the king's young son, uh, Ferdinand, thought to be dead, falls in love with po Prospero's daughter, Miranda. Then their celebrations are cut short when Prospero confronts his brother and reveals his identity as the a served duke of the Milan. Okay, so this is the whole story. So, uh, Prospero grants Ariel his freedom and prepares to leave the island. So, The Tempest is a play about magic, betrayal, love and forgiveness. This is something you should remember. It is set on an island somewhere near Italy where Prospero, the one-time duke of Milan and his beautiful daughter Miranda live with a spirit called Ariel. Spirit is fairy again, you can call her, call the 
and a stranger, a strange wild man called as Caliban. Okay. I hope the answer is clear to everyone. Now pay attention to the next question. So frailty thy name is woman. In which does this line occur? Frailty thy name is woman. What will be the answer, Kajal? Would you like to try? Charayu, Praju, Kaurav, Ankit, Revti. Anybody would like to try? What will be the answer? Uh, frailty, thy name is woman. It is from the novel or it is from the play Hamlet. Okay, and it is written again by William Shakespeare. Okay, so uh, this is a very famous quote written by and where this is written in Hamlet. And when this is written, it is, so in this resultant soliloquy. So basically it is in soliloquy. Now what is a soliloquy? It is something uh, which, uh, which is spoken or which is uh, said by yourself. Okay, so when you are talking to yourself or the things which are going on in your mind, but you speak it out loud, is called as soliloquy. So it is only for the people's understanding. So for example, if I'm thinking, but while thinking, I am talking it, whatever I'm thinking, I'm thinking it loud, I am speaking all those things, then that is called as soliloquy. Okay. Uh, so Hamlet uh, denounces his mother's swift remarriage with the statement that a frailty thy name is woman. So he thus describes all the womankind as the frail and weak in character. So the phrase is recognized as one of the memorable expressions from the play to become proverbial. Okay, remember this. So whenever uh, you are talking or whenever you uh, come across any of the quote, also try to remember it because these quotes so in exam, there might be uh, some questions asked on these quotes as well. Uh, so as of now, there are so many quotes in which the exams are, uh, the uh, questions are being asked. Okay, so try to remember such kind of quotes as well. Now pay attention to the next question. So, ah, freedom is a noble thing. Who is the composer of this line? Who is the composer? So, for that, let's uh, have a background of it, okay? So, ah, freedom is a noble thing is from the Bruce, okay? A medieval Scottish poem by John Barber, okay? Which was in 1330. To 1395. So this is his lifespan. So these lines, it is 20, uh, 225 to 36 from the Jean Barber's poem celebrating the life of King Robert. The Bruce are justly celebrated among the uh, most powerful statements of the medieval literature. So it was in medieval Scotland with the declaration of the Arbroath. In 1320, that the notion of political liberty first took on its modern meaning when the Scottish barons affirmed their support for King Robert for upholding our freedom. Okay, that is why he wrote a poem. Who wrote a poem? John Barber wrote a poem in which he says, Ah, freedom is a noble thing. Okay, and in which poem it is said? It is said in the Bruce. Okay, so what will be the answer? What will be the answer? What will be the answer? Yes, definitely option number B, that is Barber. Yes, and what is his complete name? It is John Barber, okay? Okay, now let's pay attention to the next question. So, the next question is, Name the poet of the following poems. So, there are different poems here. You have to find out the name of the poet. So, the poems are Sir uh, Gavan and the Green Knight, Paul, Purity, Patience. Okay. So, all these uh, poems are considered uh, into the Paul poets. 
so the poets who wrote this poems are called as pearl poets so there is not one particular uh, poet or the name of the poet is unknown to all okay that is why it is anonymous which is unknown so the uh, name of this uh, all the poem is unknown so who is the author so they call it pearl poet who is the author of these poems it is called as pearl poet okay now pay attention to the next question what is our next question which of the following is not a contemporary of chaucer so about the contemporaries we have already spoken so for, uh, this is again for those who haven't uh, seen my yesterday's lecture so chaucer was uh, widely known amongst the uh, literati of the day and his circle included influential figures such as sir lewis uh, clifford Sir Richard uh, Story and Sir John Montag. So he was also friendly with other contemporary writers, that is William Langland, Thomas Hockleve, Henry Scoggin, uh, Ralph Strode, John Gower. He seems to have been particularly close with Gower, as he dubs his uh, Troilus and Crescens. Okay. So uh, then again, confess uh, his confessio amantis is also uh, first version that he talks about. So here, which names are so William Langland is there, John Gower is there, as well as John Barber is there. So who is not there? John Mandeville is not the contemporary of uh, uh, of Geoffrey Chaucer. Got it? Pay attention to the next question now. What is our next question? Which of the following four dialects was to become the standard English or the King's English by the time of Chaucer? It was the East Midland. So this also I spoke about when I was teaching you about uh, English literature, and it was the East Midland which was spoken in London. Okay, the language which was spoken in London became the central language or it was also con considered as the standard English or the King's English. Okay, so this is another. So, uh, uh, where it was spoken, it was called as the East, uh, the East Midland English, okay, which was in the London. Now, pay attention to the next question. What is our next question? John Gower was born in the year when was he born we don't know so the his age or his birth date is unknown to us now next question in the social background of the age of chaucer there were three medieval institutions which of the uh, which one are those so which they belonged to so it belonged to the imperialism. What is imperialism? What is imperialism? It is a state policy. Let me just use another. So it's a state policy. It is practice or advocacy of the extending power and dominion, especially by the direct territorial acquisition by gaining political and economic control of other areas because it always involves the use of the power whether military or economic or some subtler form okay so imperialism has often been considered moral rep um, reprehensible and the term is frequently employed in international propaganda to uh, denounce and uh, discreet, discredit and up, uh, opponent's foreign policy, okay. So, basically what is imperialism? It is the state policy or which is in dominance, okay. So, when uh, any state takes uh, the dominance in its hand, it is called as imperialism, okay. And the background, the social background of age of Chaucer was in the imperialism. Got it? Now pay attention to the next question. Which of the following completed the United Kingdom? It means the last conquest of Dash. 
the united kingdom was completed when it was the last king uh, last conquest of ireland okay so there is history behind this as well but i am not going to give you everything uh, spoon feeding you have to find it out on your own the what is the history behind this conquest of ireland okay uh, now pay attention to the next question which of the four following dialects was the london dialect so recently we spoke about it so now students also pay attention that uh, in which way the questions are being asked okay so the the same question is asked only uh, in two different forms so also pay attention to the questions so that it will be easier for you to understand and to remember the answer for the question okay so now here the answer is so simple you don't have to think about it at all the answer is the east midland because what i told you that the uh, language which was spoken in the east england where where was the east england in the uh, london okay so the indian di the london dialect was also called as the east midland language okay now pay attention to the next question so chow sir expresses his age his age as how what as a whole so he expresses his age as whole so this is a very general question the qu uh, questions like such are rarely asked so chaucer was not in any sense a poet of the people who says like this who said like this so there was one person who was against geoffrey chaucer so what he said that chaucer was not in any sense a poet of the people who said this it was hudson okay who said this um then the next question is who has been called the prince of pleasurists now again another title we have understood so who was called as the prince of pleasurist for that let's uh, take some background okay so what is the background so geoffrey chaucer the first major poet of the modern english language so chaucer has been called the prince of pleasurist for he did not invent his own tales because he did not invent any of his own stories like shakespeare he borrowed them from classics italians french or english sources okay that is why because his work was not original because his stories were not original it were borrowed he was called as prince of pleasurism who was called the prince of pleasurism geoffrey chaucer was called as the prince of pleasurism understood are you clear with the questions that we are discussing yeah very well done all of you so yeah pay attention to the next question which says who was called the first protestant and the father of english reformation uh he may uh, he may be called with equal justice the father of english prose who who was called this it was john wickliffe okay who was called as the first protestant and the father of english reformation now pay attention to the next question so which of the following books was written by french physician Uh, Jean de Borgo, Borgo, whatever you pronounce it, because it's a French name. So, uh, which of this book is written by this French uh, French uh, physician, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, Pamela, or uh, Travels uh, of Sir John Mandeville, or Bible? What was written by uh, this French physician? It was. travels of sir john mandeville okay so this was the work written by um a uh, french physician jean de borgo okay i hope it is clear to everyone i don't think so there is doubt with anybody if you have any doubt related to any question do let me know please ask me all your doubts okay 
Okay, now pay attention to the next question. Who was the first to, to translate the Bible into English? He used the Latin version of the Bible. Who was the first one to translate the Bible? It was again John Wycliffe. You might have also heard that Wycliffe's Bible. Okay, so this Bible is called as Wycliffe's Bible. Okay, it is very famous and so John Wycliffe is the first one to translate the Bible into English and he used Latin version of the Bible to translate it. Okay, so this is another important thing you have to remember about the, um, about John Wycliffe. Okay, so I hope the questions are clear to everyone. So, uh, we will stop here for now for today and we will discuss the rest of the questions in our tomorrow's session. I hope all the questions are clear to you, all the answers are clear to you. If you have any doubt regarding any question, regarding any topic, regarding any option, do let me know, do comment in the comment section. You can also ask me in the chat box so that it will be easier for me to uh, answer all your questions, okay? Okay, that's very great, Praju. So, uh, very well done. So, you have been the fantastic audience. Thank you so much for your patient listening. And I hope uh, you will be there you will be present tomorrow as well on the same channel on the same platform okay uh, so you have to be present sharp at 6 pm only on ifas ugc net platform because here we are discussing so many pyqs we are studying uh, so much of english literature which is definitely going to help you to clear your UGC net exam okay and if you want any other topic you want to study from me definitely you can comment in the comment section so that I will understand that yes you want to study this topic and I will come up with that lecture series as well okay only for you all but for that you have to keep commenting in the comment section so that uh, we will be connected with each other and I will understand that what is required by you okay? Okay, and I can provide that information to you so that it will be again beneficial for your studies, right? So, um, so what is the use if uh, I am teaching the things that you already know? So, what? Uh, so, if you will tell it to me that what you want to learn from me, it will be easier for me as well, okay, to teach you all those topics. So, uh, we will stop here for now. Uh, until the time we meet next, happy learning. And keep loving literature.